Hello, and welcome to the Old Sturbridge Village Historical Clothing Office. My name is Ray Cook, and I am the 2022 to 2023 Dora Foundation Costume Fellow. This office is responsible for clothing 200 to 250 full-time interpreters, educators, volunteers, and interns. And we are constantly doing research into how people dressed in the 1830s in order to create the immersive environment that you experience when coming to the village. My primary work as a fellow has been to study existing garments from our collection, as well as other period sources, to develop new patterns and create resources for inserting additional historical details into our clothing. I'm here today to show you some of the work I've been doing over the past year. This vest from the OSV collection is an example of an everyday staple in a man's wardrobe. First, I took measurements of each piece of the vest and mapped them out on graph paper. Then I took photographs and other detailed notes about the construction that will help us to reproduce the vest later. Next, I transferred my graph paper drawings onto a gridded pattern material and smoothed out all of the curves and edges that had gotten warped over time. Then I created a full-size mock-up in white fabric that gives us a direct copy of the original to keep in our office as reference and make sure all of the pattern pieces fit together as they should. Because we clothe so many different people, patterns will need to be altered to fit a variety of sizes. In order to do this, we use modern sizing standards, as well as other patterns from our clothing office as reference. When sizing out a garment, we need to identify a few key details that will ensure that the period appropriate fit and appearance is retained as the size is changed. On this vest, a few of those details are shoulder and side seams that sit further back on the body, a collar that is set away from the front center, a single layer back panel, and a slope to the lower hem. The first vest I made from this pattern was sized to fit me. It was sewn by hand while referencing my original notes in order to understand how and why the original had been constructed in the way that it was. This process helps us to identify ways in which modern machine sewing can be inserted into speeding up the production process later while still retaining the appearance and finishing details of the original vest. With patterns and instructions now developed, we can send them off with our contract sewists to be made. In addition to working directly with garments, we can also turn to period sources, like the Workwoman's Guide, which was published in 1838. It contains various illustrated plates as well as written instructions for sewing. I've worked out a few of these patterns for women's caps. When using a period source, some translation is needed in order to follow the author's instructions. For example, a nail refers to a measurement of two and a quarter inches. The instructions also assume a level of familiarity with 19th century sewing that can require some trial and error on our part to fill in the gaps. Once this is done, we can use the patterns exactly as they would have been in the 1830s in order to add a variety of handworked accessories into our clothing stock. Another garment that I patterned is this printed cotton dress. Much like I did with the vest, I started by taking notes and measurements, drafting a pattern, and sewing a mock-up. In my mock-up, I've kept all of the original details, including those that you wouldn't see normally as a visitor. These include things like boning incorporated into the bodice, facing in the skirt hem, cords that anchor the ruching or gathering at the upper sleeves and wrists, and a separate waistband stitched to the interior of the bodice. These hidden details provide a more complete picture of period dress construction and would have been integral to the durability, structure and silhouette, and comfort while wearing the dress. Dress patterns such as this one can also be used as staff training tools. As we develop the village's skilled needle trades program, careful study of these details will help aid our interpreters in being able to accurately describe and demonstrate the hand-sewn construction of a dress in the early 19th century. This process was also highlighted during Textile Weekend in August with our Dress in a Weekend project. As we continue to introduce more dress patterns into our office, we are able to add more variety and individual expression into the clothes seen throughout the village and create a more complete picture of what life was like in rural 19th century New England. Finally, on behalf of myself and everyone who benefits from the work done in this office, I would like to thank the Dora Foundation for their generous support of the Costume Fellowship Program. And thank you for watching.